Greetings friends, old and new, Dragon here once again, back with another Arrow Shaw Scope review. This time we're getting into disc number six, which is The Chinatown Kid, uh, directed by Cheng Che from 1977. If it's your first time stumbling onto the channel, then do please remember to click that red button and subscribe. Okay, so The Chinatown Kid, um, one of the ones that was probably most discussed when it was announced that it was going to be on the box set. A lot of people were very excited about its inclusion. Uh, there's two versions on the film, which is the other thing that's had people speaking an awful lot back and forth in the forums, because we get the longer, slightly rare international version, which runs for 115 minutes, and the shorter alternate cut, which is, I think, the one that more people are maybe familiar with. Uh, it's about 90 minutes long, and that was the one that was previously remastered by Celestial. So Arrow have done a new remaster for the longer international version. Looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, you will still see some grey and evident, uh, but does not get in the way. It doesn't look quite as slick as the Celestial remasters, but I would say overall um, it's really much, much truer to how the film probably would have looked originally and looks really fantastic. It's quite, quite a treat to see. So for those that maybe don't know the film, it's in some ways slightly similar in storyline to Disciples of Shaolin, which we covered pretty recently, recently released by 88 Films, where we have a country bumpkin uh, coming to the big city, in this case to Hong Kong, um, but contemporary Hong Kong. So this isn't a period film set very much in the 1970s, getting into a spot of bother there and then having to relocate to Chinatown in San Francisco. So they do do some filming in actual San Francisco, but mostly the bulk of the film has been shot in Hong Kong on the sound stages there with uh, just intercut with kind of various shots that they picked up around the way. So some of the main San Francisco landmarks, you'll see the Golden Gate Bridge and so forth. But yeah, Fu Sheng is our, is our hero, plays Tan Tung. Um, but like I say, he's a martial artist who gets himself into some problems not long after coming to Hong Kong, falls foul of the gangs there, most notably a gang leader played by the, the wonderful Wang Lung Wei. Um, and really after kind of winning out against the gangs physically, Things are getting a little bit too dicey for him there, and so he relocates across to the States and then starts kind of a rise in power after kind of aligning himself with one of the, the street gangs that he encounters there, um, the White Dragon Gang, which he'll initially butts heads about against, but then ends up kind of rising his way up whilst facing off against a rival gang called the Green Tigers. You'll see a lot of the Venom mob in here, though they weren't the Venom mob at this point in time. This is a year before the Venoms uh, would make the Five Deadly Venoms, uh, but you'll certainly see... Uh, Philip Kwok, you'll see Lo Meng, you'll see Chen Cheng, and you'll see Sun Chen here. There's no Lu Feng, but the other four kind of main stalwart venoms are certainly all here in varying degrees. Uh, most notably, probably Lo Meng and Philip Kwok, who play the two rival gang leaders. So Philip Kwok's playing the, the leader of the White Dragon Gang, and Lo Meng's playing the leader of the Green Tiger Gang. Some good supporting actresses, most notably Fu Sheng's actual real-life wife, uh, Jenny Seng, usually just referred to as Jenny, who is a, a singer slash actress, more known as a singer back then. She's playing a character called Devon. And we also have Shirley Yu, and we have the wonderful Su Yam Yam, both kind of as girls associated with the gangs in various regards. It's a tiny cameo in the longer version from Car Away, which is really great to see kind of reinstalled here in the longer cut of the film. Though she doesn't have a huge part of the film, but it is really very cool seeing her in a Chang Che movie before she would really head over and start making most of her films for, for Lao Gar Lung. Uh, the, the film, like I guess, it runs pretty quickly and even the longer version actually kind of feels like it's a shorter viewing experience if that makes sense so the, the shorter cut feels longer it kind of feels a bit more clunky uh, the longer version I think flows much more smoothly you get a little bit more character and you'll get um, a little bit more interactions between them particularly with Sun Chen's character who's playing Yan Ching Wen who's a friend um, really a friend of Fu Sheng along with kind of quite an innocent who gets uh, led astray of some of the gangs and ends up kind of getting into substance abuse and stuff. So kind of a bit of a 70s moral message at the core of it. But Sun Chen's really great here, wearing some massive, super thick glasses and still somehow managing to look pretty fly with them. But the whole cast does really well. Action sequences are a little bit less uh, intense, maybe, than we saw in the Boxer from Shang Tung, and maybe a little bit less dramatic than some of the stuff we saw in Disciples of Shaolin, but still really, really capable and really good fun to see. And it's nice just having the focus on Fu Sheng again. We saw him doing a kind of double bill a little bit with Che Kuan Chun in Disciples of Shaolin, but really this is the Fu Sheng show here. It's kind of pretty much his movie, and he carries it really well. That's about all I'll say of the film, because I think if you don't know it, it's well worth diving into it, not knowing much more than that. You will thoroughly enjoy it. Let's talk a little bit about the disc itself and the extras that are on here because there's some great stuff. First off we get commentary by the fantastic Terence Brady um, who wrote 
the biography of the Chinatown Kid, Alexander Fu Sheng, and his book is absolutely spectacular. As good as his commentary is, his book is even better. I would highly, highly recommend you track it down. I will leave a link down below to anyone who does want to do so. And his commentary is fantastic. It doesn't just focus on Fu Sheng, as his book doesn't either, actually. He gives a great overview of really the other Shaw stars that were attached to not only this film, but also who worked quite closely to Fu Sheng in the book. And his commentary is fantastic. Absolutely, really was quite a treat. He packed in a whole bunch of trivia I hadn't known. He teased Teased out that he'd maybe considered doing a biography of Cara Way when he speaks about Cara Way's involvement in the film. Please, Terence, if you're listening, absolutely do that. I would really love this to turn into a series and we could kind of get some more great deep dive biographies into some of the Shaw stars because he does such a good job on the Fu Sheng book. I would love that type of, of analysis of Cara Way's career because it's been equally fascinating. So yeah, that's our main kind of probably our, our biggest extra on there and the full kind of running audio commentary, which is on the longer version too. So it's a, a full 150 minute commentary on the international version. And then once again, we return back to the, the treasure trove of delights from Frederic Ambrosine, who gives us a 24 minute interview with Susan Shaw, aka Su Yam Yam. And this kind of works almost like a scene specific commentary. So they play clips in the film and then she speaks on the top of it. She's fantastic, really good. Her recollections of working on the film are really entertaining to hear. She's still going strong as an actress. Um, I saw her most recently in, in Bulgaria, which is available on Third Window Films. And she kind of sort of references herself, really. She's almost kind of playing herself in the film. She was in a film called Confessions of a Concubine for Shaw's in 1976. And that's a sort of central tenant of that movie. I had reviewed this on the old channel. I think this is one of the videos that I lost and I'm a backup for. So if anyone wants to see a review again of Bulgaria, let me know and I will do another one. But yeah, great seeing her here and that extra is really nice. Only 24 minutes, but she packs a lot in and her recollections and her analysis of the scenes that she speaks about really, really very cool. We return once again to the old Celestial extras. So we get an Elegant Trails dedicated to Fu Sheng. Runs for about seven and a half minutes. This is from 2005 and really pretty great to see. It's a little bit of a puff piece, but good. A lot of information about Fu Sheng that I hadn't seen before or certainly a lot of clips of Fu Sheng that I hadn't seen before. Um, certainly clips from his, his marriage and he got married pretty close to the time when I was born. So it's kind of cool seeing some footage from, from the late seventies um, that I was obviously not around to actually see at the time. We also get six trailers on here and a pretty big image gallery, 60 slides, which again, as a standard for these, covers most of the, the cover art for the film, stills, promotional stills, and some of the lobby cards that I've been kind of flicking up and putting on screen as I've been talking here. And that's pretty much your disc. I think the only other thing worth saying, the alternate cuts only in Mandarin, our longer cut is in Cantonese and English and really highly recommended. A lot of people do class it as a Venom mob movie. I don't really. It's just nice to see the beginnings of those actors working together. And you can certainly view it as having four of the main squad in here. And it's great to see them all. If you want some other viewing that's already out there to see a bit more of Fu Sheng, I would say definitely track down his last kind of really classic film, though he is not in it as much as he was supposed to. The film he was working on when he died, Luke Hung's Take a Diagram Pole Fighter, which is out from 88 Films, and great seeing him in here, although tragically shortly. A much better, longer experience of him would be if you can go back and find ATH's release of the first Brave Archer movie, which is another one that he's carrying the show on. It's kind of one of the films that he led the charge in. It's getting a bit trickier to find, but it's a really great addition. And also, if you go back to the old IVLs, and want more Venoms and Fu Sheng together, track down Life Gamble, which is really, really great and features most of the Venom mob again alongside Fu Sheng. And then for more comedy, you could check out Treasure Hunters, directed by Lau Ka Wing and also starring Gordon Liu. Really great fun. And hopefully I would love to see both Life Gamble and Treasure Hunters getting um, bumped over onto Blu-ray at some point. It would be great to see. So I think, folks, that is pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Check back in again because I am just about to announce the winners for my 88 Films competition. That should be coming hopefully in the next couple of days, um, Monday at the very latest. And thank you very much again for watching this. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Mm -hmm.